Hello guy. It Malo I'm back for another video. Today's topic. Anime mystery. Well some anime have a storyline that's shrouded with mystery and today I'm a going to shed some light into it so without further ado here top 5 most strangest mysteries in anime. Number 1. Who dropped the metal on Rise? Yes Furuta and the Clown Soda are one and the same. He claims the reason why he dropped the steel beams on Rise was because she forgot about him and he was afraid in her celebration she might find herself pregnant, though given how everything he says has a double meaning I think that last part might have meant that the Washu V would find her and bring her back to the garden, where she'd be forced to bear the Washu children, rather than her hooking up with someone. As it seemed to mean on the surface, Yoma rescued Rise from Dr. Kano, after which her adoptive father Shachi started taking care of her again. Arima found Shachi and Rise under V's orders and captured Rise after killing Shachi. Rise was then used to make the Og guy, and likely died as a result of these experiments. Dr. Kano implanted something called the nucleus inside Furuta, likely made from Rise, which was taken up by Dragon when it took a bite out of Furuta as it emerged. This most likely became the Dragon Rise Core. Number 2. The Florian Triangle, literally translated as Zone of Demonic Triangle, is a stretch of sea that one has to cross over when heading from Water 7 to Fishman Island. It is covered in a fog so thick that it blocks out all sunlight. According to Kokoro, many pirate and commercial ships mysteriously go missing every year and, sometimes, a ship will be found sailing without any people aboard. It has also been said that there are many haunted ships with dead bodies sailing across the sea though it is revealed that all this is attributed to Brook. While some of these disappearances are due to Moria's scheme, ships in the area vanished even before the arrival of Moria's ship, Thriller Bark, 10 years before the series. This mystery is confirmed by an unknown ominous entity larger than Thriller Bark. It was barely seen by Lola through the fog. It is so large that it completely dwarfs Thriller Bark, the world's largest pirate ship, in sheer size, possibly making it the world's biggest creature to appear in the series thus far. The mysterious entities living in the Florian Triangle greatly resemble traditional depictions of Yumibozu, enormous sea monsters said to be the form of priests who died at sea. The Florian Triangle is based on a legend about the Bermuda Triangle with its purported mysterious disappearances of ships and aircrafts. Number 3. Who Kill Hashirama? Some fans think that he died because of injuries caused while fighting Madara, others think he died in the battle, while others speculate that it was old age that led to his demise. There are many theories surrounding the death of Hashirama and who exactly killed him. There are many Naruto fans who come up with ideas as to how he died. Let us look at some theories that I managed to come up with that will help us answer the question of how Hashirama died. I'm a big fan of Naruto but some theories are just out of this world. 1. Overuse of his healing jutsu. Hashirama had a special self-healing jutsu that was one of a kind. His cells could multiply and heal any injury that he had sustained during the battle, and he did not need to weave his hand to activate the jutsu. Hashirama was always using his healing jutsu during battles and this damaged him in the long run. Every time he used his jutsu, his lifespan was shortened and in the long run, his cells could not divide anymore. Just like a candle, if it continues to burn out, it will eventually reach a point where it will run out. That is exactly what was happening with Hashirama when he was using his powers. 2. Died during the battle. During Hashirama's time, Battles were a daily occurrence and that led to some people believing that he died during a battle. Even though this might be true, there was no one stronger than Hashirama, and because he had special wood-style jutsu, he could not be outnumbered. During one of the battles, the only person who would threaten him was Madara Uchiha, but he defeated him, and he went into exile. There are many battles that Hashirama fought which made him extremely sick and he started to run out of stamina. Many believe that he fell during one of the battles. 3. Died of old age. While this theory by some fans does not hold much water, some people still believe that Hashirama died of old age. 
Although he was the first Hokage, I still do not think that he died of old age considering the vital energy and powers that he had. I am still of the belief that Hashirama died during the battle which makes this theory false. When Hashirama was revived from the dead, he looked much younger than he was during his death which means that something else apart from old age killed him. 4. Illness killed Hashirama. It is also believed that the strongest shinobi in the entire Naruto met his death due to an illness that was killing him slowly. Even though he had his weaknesses, some people still believe that a strange disease was eating Hashirama from the inside and the excess use of his jutsu powers made things even worse, killing him in the process. The fact that many people believe that he died of the disease is far-fetched considering his regeneration ability was able to cure viruses, bacteria, and any unknown disease that entered his body. Hashirama had several jutsu powers, but the one that he loved to use was the wood release which is a combination of water and earth release. 4. Is Julius Novakurno is devil? The 286th chapter of Black Clover had really stirred up discussions among fans. After one of the rulers of the underworld was revealed to have time magic, many fans, including myself, couldn't help but think of Julius Novakurno. Not only is Julius extremely strong, but his magic type is very rare. Surely it couldn't be a coincidence that one of the strongest devils of the underworld also has time magic? After Chapter 331's giant series altering twist, everything points to the fact that our beloved Wizard King is a traitorous devil host. Well, not exactly. Julius's body is host to the time devil, Astaroth. But Lucius Zogratus, the eldest Zogratus sibling is the actual devil host. He hid himself within Julius, and emerges at the end of chapter 331, presumably killing Domatio, who had confronted him. Julius himself is not evil. In chapter 145, during his fight against Patoli, Julius reminisced about his dislike for society's social structure and classes. Julius believed the prejudices and discrimination held back the possibilities of magic and human potential. As a magic knight he wanted to change the classes society he lived in this drove him to become the wizard king. Secretive as he may be, Julius is intensely devoted to the kingdom, and he isn't really a traitor. But as Dam Nash reveals, the only person who has ever used Astaroth's time magic is Julius. How could he be hiding his devil powers? Julius was never hiding any devil powers. He was completely unaware of being Astaroth's host. As Dante explained in chapter 256, devil hosts share power with their devils. Since they are in a different world, this puts a damper on the power devil hosts can use. A devil host can use the entire extent of their devil powers if a gate is open, bringing me to my next point. In chapter 280, when Morris opened a gate, the Dark Triad could use 100% of their powers. At the time, Julius and Domnadio were defending the Clover Kingdom and fighting the ancient demon of the Spade Kingdom. Julius almost ran out of power fighting the demon before Asta arrived. Julius had no idea Asta would make an appearance at all and was willing to risk his life for his country. If Julius were really a devil host, he would have been the strongest person on the battlefield during the Spade Kingdom raid. The open gate would let him use 100% of his devil powers too. Julius wouldn't risk his life in the Clover Kingdom to keep his devil powers hidden. This proves that it's been Lucius who has been hiding his devil powers, waiting for the right moment to emerge. Number 5, Who Petrified the World. The petrification event is believed to have been caused by Wyman, the name given to the source of radio wave messages received by the Kingdom of Science after creating an antenna. With the creation of an antenna, Senku and the rest received a Morse code that meant why spoken by a mysterious person or object. They named the source of this message Wyman and speculated his identity as the perpetrator of the petrification event. This speculation was confirmed after the events at Treasure Island when a signal took over the radio in an attempt to activate the petrification device and turn the world into stone once again. While this attempt failed, Wyman was confirmed to be a villain, and quite possibly, the one behind everything. What is even more suspicious is the fact that Wyman's voice was eerily similar to Senku's, with the source of his radio transmissions coming from the moon. These two identifiers were substantial in the popular theory stating Wyman to be an AI designed to create the petrification devices by harvesting the planet's natural resources. As for the motivation behind Wyman turning humanity to stone, nothing has been confirmed yet. 
Some believe that they did this for the betterment of Earth, giving it time to recuperate from the centuries of damage, while others believe the reason to be something even more far-fetched. While there are a lot of plot holes, including how Wyman went unnoticed on the moon, with the Kingdom of Science planning to make their way to space, we won't have to wait long for the answers. Before we end the video I would like to give a quick shout out to my sponsor please enjoy the short video. Young man, you too can become a hero. I keep my ideals with me. Best thing in your life hey, oh, oh.